Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about this controller here that I built to run my sprinkler valve. It uses an ESP8266 and it speaks a REST API to the sprinkler controller. Now the reason I have this is I have this yard hydrant out here. Um, you turn it on, no water comes out. And the reason no water comes out is because it is behind a master valve. So there is a sprinkler valve upstream that has to be turned on for any of the sprinkler system to be active. Now I have a smart sprinkler controller that I can go in and use uh, with my iPad and I can go in and I can turn on the master valve via that, set it to run for like 30 minutes and then my yard hydrant will work. But that's not super convenient. I wanted a button here that I could just push um, and would turn it on. So we'll try that out. We'll turn the water on and then we will find out when I push this button it will make a Wi-Fi connection via my access point connect to the sprinkler controller and tell it to turn on the master valve so if we push it it'll just take a minute or so and then um, I don't know why it's taking so long it'll just take a minute or so and then the water should start to come out like that um, and it'll run for approximately 30 minutes but of course you can Turn it on and off via the handle. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic. It's actually very, very simple. So for the controller, I'm going to use the ESP8266 ESP01 module. I've used this module in several of my projects before. It's very simple, mostly self-contained, has very few pins, it's easy to wire up, and it's relatively powerful. It has built-in Wi-Fi so that you can easily use it in your wireless applications. We've got a button, which is hooked up to the reset line on the ESP01 module, so when you push the button, it will reset the microcontroller. When it resets, it's going to start up, and in the startup routine, it will make its various rest calls to operate the sprinkler controller, and then it will go into sleep. So that's the basics of it. We've just got a button and an ESP01. Now I wanted this to be a fully wireless project. I didn't want to have to run power out there, so I'm going to power it off of batteries. The ESP8266 in its deep sleep mode is rel relatively low power, so we can easily run off some AAA batteries. So that's what we put over here on this side is three AAA batteries. Depending on your chemistry and how much charge is in the battery, you could have between 1.2 and like 1.5, 1.6 volts. Um, is what you could see over there. I ended up using Amazon Basics batteries. I think I put the voltmeter on them and fresh off the charger, they were somewhere around 1.4, 1.5 or so. They'll rapidly probably decrease down into the 1.2 volt range. Now, the three of those together could easily, um, with the rechargeable batteries, put out 4.5 volts. Um, with a non-rechargeable battery, you know, fully charged, you could even be more than 4.5 volts, three of them together. Um, that is technically too much for our ESP8266 module, which runs off of 3.3 volts. Now, looking at some projects on the net, I did find lots of people running an ESP8266, either off of a 3.7 volt lithium cell or running it off of um, three AA or AAA batteries. It seemed to work for them, but it also seems like too much voltage, and I'm a little bit concerned about the longevity of the ESP8266. Adding a regulator is relatively straightforward, so I did go with a um, low dropout, low quiescent current regulator, the MCP1700-3302. I found this by looking at some other people's battery-powered um, ESP8266 projects and figured it worked for them, it ought to work for me. So I went with that regulator and then I threw a couple of capacitors on the other side of it. Uh, let's see, this capacitor here should actually be a thousand microfarad is what I use. So these just came out of my junk box. You know, usually you want a decent bulk capacitor on the outside of a regulator and then, you know, often you'll want a little um, bypass capacitor for the smoothing and the low ESR and such. So through those capacitors on, I actually wired this up without a circuit board. It's just soldered together. Uh, we'll see the implementation in a moment. And that provides power to the ESP01. I did use my um, EEV blog U Current Gold uh, to test this, and I got this measuring at about 25 microamps through this regulator into the ESP8266 
when it is in deep sleep mode. So that should last a good long time off of some AAA battery. Programming an ESP01 module is super easy with this USB programmer I got off Amazon. You just take and you stick your ESP01 module in there and then you can plug this into any old USB port. Now it actually breaks out the pins here with male header pins so if you wanted to de debug it in place you could just wire some jumpers onto there and use it and it's also got a reset button on the side. Okay so here I have constructed the circuit there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, we have a battery holder with three um, Amazon Basics rechargeable batteries. It's actually a four battery holder so I soldered one of the um, one of the battery slots across. Three of these here should give us between 3.6 and 4.5 volts depending on how much charge is in the batteries. After that we come to this conglomeration here uh, which is the voltage regulator. So you might be able to see it in there. This little black thing is the 3.3 volt regulator and then hooked up to it is a 1000 microfarad capacitor as well as a little tiny uh, 0.1 microfarad uh, monolithic ceramic. And I kind of gunked it up in um, hot melt glue that both insulates it and uh, also provides some strain relief on the wires. And then finally over here we have the ESP8266. This is the ESP01 module. And I've just got um, some pot connectors connected to the back of it. That's really all there is to it. So here I've taken all of the parts and I put them inside of this blue box. I think I got this box off eBay. It's watertight box. It's got some gasket around the side. I cut a hole in the front of it for push button switch so you can push the button. The push button actually has a little o-ring that came with it too. And you can see here we've got the battery. We've got the regulator and capacitor, and then we've got the ESP01 module. It's all stuffed in this case. On the back of the case, I made a 3D printed bracket that I inset some magnets in and glued. So I can just take this and stick it to one of my wrought iron fence posts, and it should hold the case in place. Okay, let's take a quick look at the software. Now I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you could have very easily used the native Arduino tool set with this instead. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at it. So there is a setup function. The setup function is really the only code we're gonna have. If you were to scroll down to the loop function, you would see the loop function doesn't do anything. And that's because what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the setup one shot when the device is reset, and then we will enter deep sleep mode. So what we do is we start up a serial object that's useful to print diagnostic messages out so that we can see what's going on. Uh, and then we um, connect to the Wi-Fi. So we do Wi-Fi begin using our SSID and our password. And then we wait until it's connected because we can't do anything until, until it's connected. Um, print out a little bit of stuff about it. And then I create a Wi-Fi client secure. Now that is an SSL client, so we need to use secure sockets when talking to our Rain Machine API. So we create that and we set it to insecure mode. Now by default, uh, the SSL client wants to verify the certificate of who it's talking to. So it wants a signature of that certificate from um, the Rain Machine. And rather than going through the effort to get that signature, I just put it in secure mode. The disadvantage is that it cannot verify that it is talking to the Rain Machine. You could have a man in the middle or similar attack, but I'm not really worried about someone causing an attack by getting in between my button out there on the porch and the sprinkler timer. So I just put it in insecure mode, just a lot simpler to deal with. Uh, then we log in to the Rain Machine. Um, we get an authentication token, then I stop a zone 8. Zone 8 is a zone that doesn't actually have a sprinkler valve, but it will trigger the master valve, which will put water out there so that I can use my hydrant. So I stop it so that I can immediately start it and set it to um, 1800 seconds, which is 30 minutes. Uh, now the reason I stop and then start is because issuing a second start would ordinarily not override the time. If, if you're down to like one minute left and you push the button, I want it to recycle a full 30 minutes um, rather than just continuing for the one minute. So I do the stop and then start, that resets it to a full 30 minutes. And then we go into deep sleep. Now we can look at these functions in a little bit more detail. Um, so the login function, scrolling up here, um, we create an HTTP client and we connect to the um, address and port at the right URL uh, for the rain machine. Uh, and then we issue a post request. 
um, issuing some login text. Now the login text is actually hidden in a file called uh, private settings.h because I don't really want to share my login credentials. But doing that post will post to the Rain Machine, get back a login token, and then the token is used for further requests. So we issue the post, uh, we make sure we get a HTTP 200 response, uh, and then we get the response because we actually want to parse that response. So we take the response, then we deserialize the JSON. So that takes the, the ASCII text and turns it into a JSON structure like a dictionary. Uh, and then we can go into that and we can um, pull out some of the fields we want. So we want a status code field, which is the rain machine telling us whether the login succeeded or not. And we want the access token, which is what we need to pass to further um, routines in order to be able to execute options. So we take those and we return them to the caller. Now the zone stop and start functions are pretty simple. Here we are at zone stop. All we're doing is we're just posting uh, to a stop URL with that access token. So we post it and then we get the result and print the result out of the serial console. And then the start command is similar, um, it's a different URL. We have to actually make a little JSON body to send to it that has the time, the duration in there. And then we post it and then we print the result to Serial Console. So when I do the little uh, demo here at the end, you'll see it actually print these, these strings out so that you can see what happens. Okay, it's time for a quick demo. On the right hand screen, I am logged into the Rain Machine website. That is the website that runs the sprinkler controller where you can normally manually uh, control your sprinkler zones and set up your programs and such. I'm not actually going to do any control operations from there. That's just going to be for visuals so that we can see when the timer activates. And on the left hand screen, I have a shell session that is open into a serial console into the ESP01 module, the one that I have programmed. So I'm going to push the button on my uh, ESP01 and then we will see the ESP01 reset and it will do its Wi-Fi connection and stuff like that. So let's push the button and see what happens. So it always spews out some garbage whenever you reset an ESP8266, but you can see there it connected to Wi-Fi. It got an IP address, it logged in uh, to the sprinkler controller, and then it sent, it first sent a command to stop the zone, um, so that's in case the zone was previously running with fewer minutes, we stop it and then we restart it so it can run longer. And then it sent the command to run the zone for 30 minutes. So we can see there, Hydrant turned on and Hydrant is running for 30 minutes. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.